What's up, IGTV? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Talking Options. Yeah, I'm about to kill two birds with one stone. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube right now and you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow Samantha Reports and follow Talking Options. I also post on there pretty much every day about the market and different videos that you'll find very intriguing about my life. Another thing I want to talk about is that, hey, if you're watching on Instagram and you're not following YouTube, you need to subscribe. Get your life together. That's where we talk in options, especially when you want those in-depth videos, because I can only post um, but so much on IGTV. You guys don't want to watch that. What are we talking about today? We are talking about the charts. So a lot of you have been reaching out saying that, hey, Samantha, um, I downloaded Thinkorswim, but boy, oh boy, <laughs> this chart is a piece of work. This platform is a piece of work, right? Um, I agree. There's a lot going on here, and that's the reason why I wanted to make a make this follow-up video so that you can see a little bit more on what you can do with Thinkorswim. So that's what I'm trying to pull up right here, right now, so we can get the party going. Okay, here it is. So right now you're looking at the Thinkorswim platform. If you don't know anything about this, I have another video that talks about how you can download it. Um, and it also kind of goes through more of the basics. So check that video out on YouTube. I'll put the link in the description. So taking a look at this, right now you're looking at oil and I believe you're looking at natural gas here. Let me see, is this NG? Yeah, that's natural gas. So remember, we already talked about how you can look at the charts on the Thinkorswim platform. If you want to switch your underlyings, you just go up to this section right here, that forward slash is for futures, so you can see CL. That means that we're looking at crude oil. I could change this to the euro. That would just be simply uh, forward slash 6E, and you're going to see the futures chart for that. And I can even put the British pound right here. So I'll put forward slash 6B. You see what I'm saying? So what I like about this platform um, is it's very, like you can customize almost everything on this platform to what you want to see every day. So for me, um, I typically like to look at the currencies like the Euro, the British pound, um, and then also the commodities, oil, natural gas. If I want to look at multiple charts at one time, this is what I would come up to right here. So you see those two little, I'm hovering over it. You press that. I can look at four charts at one time. So I can pull up um, several different commodities if I want. I can pull up NG. Remember, you got to put that forward slash if you're trying to see the futures chart. I can pull up crude oil here. Come down, pull up gold. Wait, where's gold? There we go. And then I'll even pull up we got S&P 500, that's ES. So I have four different charts right here that I'm looking at right now. Um, and you can continue to multiply them if you want. I believe this goes by like seven by four. You can put as many charts as you want. As you want. I wouldn't do this because you can barely see the patterns, um, at least if you're trading it at least. But if you're just trying to show off the different currencies and probably see if any of them are moving the same, what's the difference between them. Um, if you're trading in pairs, that's a good way to look at these underlyings. So yeah, um, you can look at multiple charts at one time if you want to. And that's one reason why I think is really great because it has a lot of things you can customize. Right now you're looking up here at the different tabs. So you can see you have the monitor tab. So these are the trades that I'm currently in. So you can see I'm actually kind of down on the Canadian dollar and the euro right now. But it's not too bad because I believe I did a short, I did a short, position on both of these. And so remember what you know about short positions is that you already collected that money. So that's the max that you can lose. So if I, for example, collected, you know, $200 on that Canadian trade right here, it says that I'm down 110, but technically I'm not. That means I still have $90 to spare before I get to my break even because I took that money out of the market. I collected $200. So even though that says 110, that just means that I had to give 110 back right now if I were to get out of that trade. So I'm not too worried about those two positions. Um, so the monitor position is where you will see all of your trades. And then you can come, come over to the trade tab right here where you'll see this is where you see the options train. 
chain. <laughs> I always say the options train. This is the options chain. Um, and the options chain, a lot of people, when they see this at first, they, I mean, they're pretty intimidated by it. And I was too, because there's a lot going on here, but this is the basics of options. And I'll be honest, this is the reason why a lot of people don't talk about options, don't know how to trade options and don't teach options is because you really do have to give some time to learn this platform. It's not that simple. So looking at the options chain right now, these are the different expirations that we have. So I talked in a previous video about the options contract. You always have an expiration date. So these are where you will see your expiration. So this one expires on tomorrow. That's the reason why you see a one beside it where you see May 19th. Every weekly's contract they always expire on a Friday, and if there's a holiday on Friday, then it expires on that Thursday beforehand. But putting holidays aside, usually you will see that they all expire on a Friday, typically the third Friday of every month. So you can see here, these are the different underlines that we have for the Canadian dollar. Um, but many times you'll see a lot more expirations than, than that. You, even if we go over, like, for example, to Apple. So if we go over to Apple, you can see, oh boy, because Apple is so liquid, it's very popular, a lot of people trade it. Take a look at how many options chains you have here. You have a lot of weeklies, um, and you have a lot more expirations that you can buy way ahead of time. So those are some of the differences that you'll see there. Um, I want to stick with the euro right now because you guys shouldn't be worried about weeklies or anything like that. You're just learning the platform. So say, for example, we were trading based on June 19th. Say we want to do a 36 day expiration. We don't want to do anything close, right? So this is where you would see your strikes. Um, and right now you can see the market is trading at 1.1249. So what we would say is that if we wanted to buy at the money, at the money is wherever the market is trading at that given time, we would typically position ourselves to buy at this strike price or sell at this strike price. Now you got these two sections over here. This is a call section and this is a put section. So in the call section, we have the short calls and we have the long calls. Um, bid represents when you're selling, so that would be your short call. Ask would be your long call. So short call, again, is a bearish position. Long call is a bullish position. On the put section, you got the two opposites right here. You have sell a put, which would be a bullish position, and then you have the ask put, which would be a this would be a bearish position because you are buying outright saying the market is going to go down. So these are your different strike prices and this is your bid and your ask. So when we press, for example, if I were to buy, if I wanted to do a long put, I would press at the money here, 0 0.0053. And say, for example, I want to do one contract. One contract equals 100 shares. When I come down to the confirm section, this little tab is going to pop up and it's going to tell me about that particular trade. If I were to execute this trade right now, I know that my max profit would be 100, $139,337. And my max loss, because this is what I'm paying, would be $662.50. So Again, with long positions, whenever you are buying outright, that is the max that you can lose, right? So that's the reason why we already know what the max loss would be for us. Uh, your commission is included here so that you know the cost of the trade total. So right now we know that the commissions is going to cost us about uh, $2.25, that is the long put section. So short, if I want to do a short put, I would just go to the bid. Um, if I want to do a long call, it's right over here as well. So that's the trade section. Um, I could go into a lot more details on this. We're going to have to do more videos on breaking down this options chain. Because even here, what I just pressed here was the all section. So you can see how many different strikes that you can actually purchase at. You can go way out the money. Say for example, I think that the Euro is going to literally, you know, go all the way down to 0.97. Then that's when I would probably position myself out of the money. Uh, now, typically you would only do that when you are trying to you're expecting implied volatility. You're expecting a lot of volatility in the underlying. You don't want to just do that just to do that because especially when you're selling, that can get really expensive. But when you're buying, 
it can be very cheap. However, the probability of it actually going to 0.97, as you can imagine, it goes down. So that's the trade section. Um, the next one I want to show you right now, you saw the chart, but let me just go a little bit more into this. So when you're looking at the charts, if I pull up one chart here, still looking at the euro, um, one thing that I typically remember that I told you guys before in the last video is I don't use indicators often. Why? Because indicators are just a derivative of price. So if I were to put a lot of indicators on this chart right now, I'm just giving myself different derivatives of the same price. Oftentimes that confuses a lot of technical traders. So what I typically like to use is I want to know what is the volume? Is there a lot of people trading right now? Is there liquidity? And I also use Fibonacci retracement level. So I just right clicked here. You can see I go to add drawing. And if I want to add a retracement level, I go up to this percentage sign, Fibonacci retracement. Boom shakalaka. As you can see, this is how you do it. You just draw it from this low to this high. Those are the two points that I chose right there. And then I can see what Fibonacci levels um, I would probably trade at. So, I mean, even though we're looking at a four hour chart, um, you can see that this is actually a pretty nice setup here if you were a swing trader, where now we saw that there was a pullback to that 50 level right around, I think that's April 15th. So all my swing traders out there, that could have possibly been a good setup for you if you like to look at the technicals. So that's how you could put on a Fibonacci retracement level if you want to delete it, right click and you can press remove, you can customize it. Um, I think I talked about in the other video, the style why I use Hikanashi candles. So if you want to check that out and you want to look at different candlesticks, check that video out. And then here I have the different time frames. So you can customize this list as well. Um, I typically use the one minute, five minute, all the way up to the four hour chart because I look, I like to look at intraday trades as well as day trades, as well as swing trades. So I like to mix up the pot a little bit. And that's the reason why I have all of these here for myself. Um, I want to keep this video short, so I will do a part two. That was a lot to take in, especially if you are a new trader. So rewatch this video again if you need to. Always comment below because I answer all of my comments. I try to get back to everyone. Also, if you want to DM me on Instagram, that's A-OK. -okay. So until next time, make sure you talk your options. See y'all later.